we're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. Welcome to Redemption Church in Plano, Texas. I'm Chris Fluitt, and I'm so pumped to be able to share the Word of God with you today. I really am. I'm really pumped. You, you know, if you look on the news, you don't know a lot of good news is happening. There are great things happening all over the place. We just heard from Russia. They're baptizing a bunch of people in Russia right now. Isn't that awesome? Uh, In our own backyards, people are baptizing their grandchildren. Josie, I see you baptizing your grandchildren in your backyard. A lot of people are worried about today, but Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You weren't worried before corona. Don't be worried today. Jesus Christ is the same. I'm pumped. I'm excited about what God's doing, and I'm excited about this word tonight. Somebody say amen, amen. We're in the second week of our The Same Jesus sermon series. Last week, we told you that the same Jesus you read about in your Bible, he is alive, he is unchanged, and he is returning. You didn't hear that word? You need to go back Listen to it on our website. Listen to it on our Facebook. Just go find that live video. Uh, Today, I want to tell you that the same Jesus still does miracles. The same Jesus still does miracles. Jesus was known for miracles, right? You can't hardly find a person that doesn't know about Jesus and his miracles. In John chapter 3, a Pharisee, who was at odds with Jesus on many subjects because he was a Pharisee, had to admit this. I want you to hear what the words of Nicodemus are in John chapter 3, verse 2. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Pharisees were constantly trying to devise scriptural arguments against Jesus. And when they couldn't find a scriptural argument, they just find any argument. It's the truth. But Nicodemus, he surrounded himself with Pharisees all day, every day. Pharisees who denied Jesus as Messiah and argued against him. So Nicodemus heard all those arguments. He actually took part in creating those arguments and arguing them. But then he met Jesus privately to tell him these words. We know that you are from God. We know that you are. Do you know that the Pharisees weren't supposed to say that? But they met with him. He met with him privately and he said, we know that. that, See that, that word right there in your Bible. It says, we know. That you are from God. Forget all the arguments you hear, Jesus. We all know that you are for God. How did they know? How did Nicodemus know? And how did the Pharisees know that he was from God? For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus was known for miracles. In fact, the miracles of Jesus reveal Jesus. Reveals who he is. Reveals That what he says is the truth. If you will read your New Testament, and I hate to say that sentence, because a Christian, of course, should be reading their Bible, but it's not the case. So let me just tell you right now, if you will actually get out your Bible and read it, if you will read any of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see Jesus do miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I'm going to recite to you the miracles of Jesus. Number one, virgin birth of Jesus. Number two, turned water into wine. Number three, the miraculous healing of the nobleman's son. Number four, the miracle at the pool of Bethesda. Number five, miracle catch of fish the first time. Number six, the miraculous healing of a demoniac. Number seven, the miraculous healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Number eight, healing many sick 
and disease. They couldn't even name them all. Number nine, miraculous healing of a leper. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about your Jesus. Number 10, the miraculous healing of a paralyzed person. Number 11, the healing of a man with a withered hand. Number 12, he, miraculous healing of the centurion servant. Number 13, raising of the son of the widow of Nain. Number 14, healing a blind, mute, demon-possessed man. Number 15, Christ miraculously calms the storm by simply saying, peace, be still. Number 16, miracle involving the Gerizim demoniacs. Number 17, heals the woman with the issue of blood. Number 18, raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Number 19, he heals two blind men. Number 20, casts out a dumb spirit. Number 21, he feeds five thousand people with some bread and some fish number 22 Jesus and Peter both walk on the water number 23 healing the demon possessed daughter of the Syphophoenician woman number 24 miraculous healing of the deaf and the dumb 25 miraculous healing of many sick people 26 miraculous feeding of 4,000 people people 27 miraculous healing of the blind man number 28 the transfiguration number 29 miraculous healing of the demoniac child number 30 he pulls a coin out of the fish's mouth to pay his taxes number 31 miraculous healing of the man blind from birth he miraculously heals the mute demoniac number 32 number 33 he the healing of a woman who had been bent over for 18 years number 34 healing of the man with dropsy the swelling of his body Jesus healed him number 35 the resurrection of Lazarus from the grave he simply says Lazarus come forth and Lazarus was alive again 36 miraculous healing of the 10 lepers and then he restores one of them the one who returned to give thanks number 37 miraculous healing of blind Bartimaeus 38, the miraculous withering of the barren fig tree. Number 39, mirac Christ miraculously heals the ear of Malchus after Peter cut it off with a sword. Number 40, upon his death, the whole land became dark in the middle of the afternoon. Number 41, he raised himself up from the grave on the third day. Number 42, he vanishes before the Emmaus travelers, right before their eyes, he disappears. Number 43, he appears to the 11 apostles, walks right through the walls of, that, of the room they were sitting in. Number 44, the second miraculous catch of fishes. And number 45, the ascension into heaven. Wherever you are, would you put your hands together for a Jesus Christ who is powerful, who does miracles, who heals, who delivers people, who delivers people from demons. He does it all. God, we praise you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. I believe in a miracle working Jesus. I just listed 40 Five miracles from Jesus in your Bible. If I forgot one, please let me know. I've been working on it all week. You can check out my notes on redemptionplano.com to review them and see all the scripture references from where they are found. But you should know that Jesus did a whole lot more than 45 miracles. John chapter 21, verse 25. These are like the last words of this gospel. John says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Jesus has done so many more miracles in, in his earthly ministry, but how many know he still does miracles today? If Jesus has done a miracle for you, come on, testify about it. Say, I'm a miracle.
Go ahead and write it. Go ahead and share it. I am one of those miracles. I want to tell you that the miracles of Jesus reveal Jesus. This was true in John chapter 3 for Nicodemus. It is still true for us today. The list of 45 miracles I read to you is not meant to serve as historical fossils in a museum exhibit. You know, fossils, they reveal what used to be alive. The, this is not fossil evidence. This is not revealing something that Jesus used to do. The list of miracles, spiritual deliverances, and healings from the Bible are not to, meant to remind you of what Jesus used to do a long time ago in the past. No, the truth in your Bible reveals what Jesus did and still does today because he is the same Jesus the same Jesus still does miracles do you believe that redemption church am I talking to anybody that believes in a Jesus that has not changed that he still does miracles what Jesus did yesterday what is he going to do today he will still do it today and what Jesus did today what will he do tomorrow he will do it tomorrow what Jesus did today, he will do forever because scripture tells us this is true. Where is that found? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Let's look at this verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm talking to you about the same Jesus today. Do you believe Jesus still does miracles? Do you still believe that he can deliver people from demons? Do you still believe that Jesus heals? Do you still believe that he can miraculously provide and protect? There are Christians who believe Jesus is the Lord and Savior. They believe the word of God is true and unchanging. Yet somehow they reject miracles. They reject deliverances. And they reject healings. That's true. It's true. You don't, you would be surprised how many there are. It's, it's shocking to me. This is actually their doctrinal stance. They actually stand in their pulpit and talk about Jesus's miracles only in the past tense. They will actually get up and talk about what Jesus did and then not experience anything that Jesus did. It's hard to fathom, right? Now, I could really, like, jump off on that and punch that in the face. But no, let's take it closer to home for us. Because there are Christians who believe Jesus is the Lord and Savior. And they believe the word of God is true and unchanging. And they believe that Jesus still does miracles. But they don't pray for miracles. They don't pray for deliverance. And they don't pray for healing. Now, that's not their doctrinal stance. That's how they live. And Redemption Church, can I just get in your face for a moment? I'm talking about us. I'm talking about you and I'm talking about me. I'm talking about us. That we would believe in a Jesus that's unchanged, yet we wouldn't ask him to do miracles. That is something I can't fathom. That is something that makes no sense sense at all are we serving the same jesus do we do we amen the sermon on a god who still does miracles but then live a life void of faith live a life void of prayer and expectation void of miracles signs and wonders i'm telling you if we are really worshiping the same jesus we ought to see the same jesus at work in our lives we serve the same Jesus who walked on water, calmed the seas, raised the dead, healed blind eyes, fed multitudes, cast out demons, rose from the dead, ascended into heaven. How dare we not pray and believe in miracles? How dare we have the doctrinal stance but not have it in our heart, not have it in our livelihood? I'm telling you, we are living well below our means if we aren't living in the world of miracles from Jesus Christ today. 
I want to tell you, a Jesus who no longer performs miracles is not the same Jesus. Do you really believe in the same Jesus? If you do believe in the same Jesus, then when you see a problem, when you see a sickness, when you see evil raising its ugly head, when you see a need, when you see a hurt, when you see a depression, then you ought to call on that same Jesus to come and be the same Jesus who does miracles. There is something wrong with a Christian that doesn't pray for healing. There is something wrong for, with a Christian who doesn't pray against evil. There is something wrong who does, with a Christian who doesn't believe in the miraculous power of Jesus Christ today. I want to tell you, the same Jesus still does miracles. Believe it. The same Jesus still does miracles. Profess it. The same Jesus still does miracles. Live it. The same Jesus still does miracles. But I already know what you're thinking. See, you're predictable. I know you're predictable because I am too. We're both predictable. Don't be offended. But here's what you're thinking. You're thinking this question. But what if the miracle doesn't happen? You're thinking it. I want to tell you, sometimes miracles don't happen. Did you know this? Why is that? You ever wonder that? You ever spend time wondering, why didn't this miracle happen? I prayed, why didn't this happen? It would have made a lot of sense for for God to have walked into that hospital room and saved that person. What is going on? I want to give you three reasons miracles don't happen when you pray. You listen up. I'm going to hit them really quick. Three reasons why miracles don't happen. Number one, a lack of faith. Somebody say a lack of faith. There is a place in Mark 6 where Jesus himself went to perform miracles and was not able to perform all the miracles he desired to perform. Mark chapter 6, verse 5 through 6. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Sometimes miracles don't happen because of a lack of faith. In that city, Jesus wanted to do more. Go ahead and name the city you live in. Plano, Texas. In that city, Jesus wanted to do more. Some of you live out in Mesquite. In Mesquite, Jesus wanted to do more. In Dallas, Texas, Jesus wanted to do no more. Name the city Jesus wanted to do more. But a lack of faith hindered what Jesus could do. I want to tell you that Jesus wants to do so much in you, but a lack of faith can hinder what Jesus wants to do. Number one, the reason you pray and miracles don't happen could be a lack of faith. Number two, sometimes God has a purpose for the pain. Go ahead and say that, a purpose for the pain. Three times the Apostle Paul prayed a, about a painful thorn in the flesh. We aren't sure what the thorn is. There are a lot of preachers that will go, oh, I know what, the, what that thorn is. This is one preacher that won't tell you that. I have no idea what that thorn is. I'm not sure. But a lack of faith was not his problem. <laughs> what we do know is that Paul prayed three times for God to remove this painful thorn. In the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 8 through 9. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. What's this about? Let me explain it to you. God never healed Paul of this pain in his flesh. Why? 
Because God had a purpose for the pain. Very simple. God sometimes has a purpose for the pain. God was using the pain to teach Paul something and to put Paul in a place where he really wanted Paul to be. Sometimes people ask for prayer. They ask for a miracle. They ask for a healing in their finances. When, when what God really wants for them is for them to repent of their sins. I want you to get this. Somebody's asking, God, help my finances. And God's like, yeah, I care about your finances, but man, you're, you're far from me because of your sin. And really, I have allowed this pain to come upon you so that maybe you will realize you're far from me and you will do what you know you're supposed to do, repent and turn away from your sin. How many know that God forgiving your sins is much more important than God healing your bank account? Anybody know this? It's news for some of us. God cares more about that. And sometimes he allows a pain to come upon you for you to turn your life back over to Jesus Christ. God is actually using the pain for a purpose. Until his purpose is fulfilled, God may not work the miracle. Number one. A lack of faith might be why you prayed and there was no miracle. Number two, God may have a purpose for the pain. Number three, God wants to flow through you. Flow through you. Say those words, flow through you. Sometimes God wants his healing power, his provision, and his deliverance to flow from heaven, from the throne, through you to the need through you. The reason why the miracle might not happen is because you aren't present in the action, that you aren't showing up for the miracle to flow through you. There's somebody that their car ran out of gas, and you're like, oh, Lord, heal their gas tank. And God's like, actually, I could use you. The the provision actually could flow right through you right now. You could take them to the nearest gas station, buy them a tank of gas, bring them back, have them pour it into their car, and they drove off. And you were the miracle. The miracle did happen. God's provision did happen. He wanted it to flow through you. Sometimes the miracle doesn't happen because we aren't present, allowing the miracle to flow through us. But what if the miracle doesn't happen? Sometimes that's the reason we don't pray for a miracle. I'll feel really silly if I pray for a miracle and it doesn't happen. Do you think Jesus felt silly when he went into the town and wanted to do more than what was available by their faith? No. He went straight to another town and he went and did all those miracles. So stop it with this. But what if the miracle doesn't happen? Keep praying. Keep reaching out for God. Keep trusting in the same Jesus who does miracles. If the miracle doesn't happen here, move on to the next town and watch the miracles happen. That's your example of Jesus. He's our example, church. Let's get on it. If you pray and the miracle doesn't happen, it doesn't mean you are wrong to pray. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want to heal. It doesn't mean that God won't heal, the, heal and bring the miracle later. Sometimes it takes time. I want to tell you that the same Jesus, he still does miracles. He still does miracles. Jesus desires to work miracles. He wants to work a miracle today. It took way too long in my life for me to understand this. I don't have to talk Jesus into doing the miracle. I used to think that was the purpose of prayer. Oh, if I pray good enough, if I abstain from sin enough, then, Je- then I'll get in good with Jesus, and he will actually then want to heal me. Wrong. That is 100% wrong. No, Jesus wanted to heal you already. Jesus wants to deliver you already. Jesus wants to provide for you already. You don't have to talk him into this. The same Jesus desires to heal you. Before I close today, I want you to talk to God for his healing power.
to flow through your life. I don't want you to talk to God and say, God, please, like me enough to let your healing power flow through me. No, God, let me be in the position that I need to be in for your healing power to flow all the way from heaven through me and into my life and into other people that are hurting. Before today's over, we're going to pray that together. I want to tell you that healing flows. Can you say those two words? Healing flows. I gave you three reasons why miracles don't take place when you pray. Now I want to give you three ways that healing flows. Healing flows from Jesus. He is the source of all healing. Physical healing. Spiritual healing. Emotional, mental healing. It all comes from Jesus. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he, being Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. By whose wounds? By the wounds of Jesus, we are healed. The healing that takes place flows straight from the wounds of Jesus. The punishment that Jesus took in being beaten, carrying the cross, being nailed in his hands and his feet, being, being left, dying on the cross. All of that punishment was for you. It was for the salvation of your soul, but also for your healing. Pause. There is something wrong if you believe in the salvation that flows from the cross, but you don't believe in the healing that flows from the cross. I've got issue with not believing in the healing that flows from the cross. Healing flows from Jesus on the cross. You can be healed today because healing still flows from that very same Jesus. Number one, healing flows from the cross. Number two, healing flows through faith in Jesus. It flows from Jesus and it flows through faith in Jesus. Acts chapter 3 verse 16 Peter says this after a, a, a lame man was healed. He, they asked him, how, was this, how did this happen? What happened? How was this lame man who had been laying out here all this time, how was he suddenly healed? And Acts 3.16, Peter says this, By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. Faith in his name. Somebody tell me what his name is. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Do you have faith in the name of Jesus? I tell you what, I end every prayer in Jesus' name. Not because I have faith in my words of prayer, but because I have faith in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is so powerful. Do you have faith in that name? The lame man in Acts 3 was healed by faith in the name of Jesus. The healing flows from Jesus, but the healing also flows through faith in Jesus. You may be thinking, I don't know if I have faith enough. How much is enough faith? I mean, sometimes I worry. Sometimes I doubt. Sometimes I think, well, you know, I just cussed out that guy driving on 75. God probably doesn't want to hang out with me anymore. Do you have enough faith? Do you? Well, let me ask you this. Do you have enough faith to ask? That's a great starting place. Start there. I have enough faith to ask Jesus to do this. I want you to know, you coming in prayer, asking someone to pray for you, that's faith. You taking time to pray, to read your word, to, to worship Jesus, that is faith. Jesus taught us that a small amount of faith, it can move what? It can move mountains. Faith the size of a what? Mustard seed. Matthew chapter 17, 20 talks about that. You don't need much faith. In fact, there's somebody who came to Jesus and Jesus said, do you believe? And the man said, yes, I believe. But um, could you help my unbelief? That's what he said. I believe, but also, you know, I, I don't know if I believe enough. You know what? Jesus healed that person. Uh, family. He, he healed them. He did it. Jesus did that because healing flows from Jesus and it flows 
through faith in Jesus. And my friend, you have enough faith. Stand on it. Believe in it. Healing flows through you. I'm drawing to a close. I want you to know that healing flows through you. I'm talking about you. Healing flows from Jesus. It flows through faith in Jesus, but it also flows through you. Jesus wants his power to flow through you and in it someone else. And this pattern is all over the word of God. In Mark 16, Jesus tells his followers that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He wants them to lay hands on them and then the healing power that flows from Jesus on the cross through faith in Jesus is going to flow through their hands and in to someone's life. In James chapter 5, 14, it says, Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church, and let the elders of the church pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. It is Jesus' plan that his healing would flow through you, that his healing would flow through his church. He wants you to pray for healing. He actually wants you to lay your hands on people and pray for them. Don't act like that's weird. That is Jesus' plan. That's what he has asked you to do. Redemption Church, it is God's plan for you to lay hands on the sick and the healing power flows from Jesus through faith in Jesus and through your prayer. Redemption Church, he wants his miracles to flow through us. Do you know that? He wants his miracles to flow through us. Do you want that? I want that. I want it. Jesus, I want your miracles to flow through me. Jesus, the same Jesus who hung on the cross for me, who fed the multitude, who did all those miracles, those powerful things, raising people from the dead. I want your miracles to flow through this church. I want them to flow through my life. I want them to flow through my family, my children. I want the miracles to flow through their life to other people. Do you want to see the same Jesus doing miracles in your world? I want it. I want to see it. I've come today to tell you the same Jesus still does miracles. Do you need a miracle today? You're absolutely in the right place. The same Jesus still does miracles. I have received miracles in my life. My wife right back there. Wave, Sarah, that beautiful lady. Number one, it's a miracle that she said yes, right? And everyone pushed the like button. When I met Sarah, she had grand mal seizures. Daily, pretty much. And the doctors told her she would never be able to have children. She would never be able to carry a child to term because these grand mal seizures would cause a miscarriage every time. And she was on heavy medication. People had to watch her close because at any moment she could have a, a grand mal seizure and if someone wasn't there to help her, she could, she could die. In 2007... She came to Redemption Church, and in a prayer meeting, she came to the front of the church, and people were praying, and the pastor, his name was Kevin, he looked at her and said, Sarah, is there anything you'd like us to pray about? And Sarah said, nope. And at that moment, she fell out in the church with a grand mal seizure. And I want to tell you that the healing power of Jesus flowed from the cross. It flowed through faith, and it flowed through believers as those believers that were gathered there to worship and pray, they gathered around my girlfriend, and they prayed for her. And that was in 2007. Was that September? When was that, Sarah? October 24th, 2004, 2007. That was the last time Sarah Fluid had an epileptic seizure because the same Jesus still does miracles today. <laughs> Hallelujah. She no longer takes medicine. She was off medicine. The doctors 
proclaimed she no longer has epilepsy. Jesus took it away. And in 2010, we had a son. His name is William. In 2013, we had another son. His name is Hudson. And in 2016, we have another son. His name is Joshua. All three of those boys are miracles because they never should have happened according to the doctors. But the same Jesus still does miracles. Do you need a miracle today? The same Jesus still does miracles. I believe Jesus Christ wants to do a miracle in your life. What is it? Is it financial? Is it emotional? Is it just you're worried? Is it that you need a job? What is it? Are you sick? What is it? Do you, do you need direction in your life? Do you need to hear his voice? You can have all of that right now from the same Jesus. That miracle, I want you to see it. It flows straight from Jesus on the cross. And it flows through your faith in Jesus. And it can flow through the body of Christ right now. I'm praying that God let me be standing in the right place right now, praying the prayer of faith. God, do the miracle right now in their life. Do the miracle. Lord, I pray for Dean right now. Do a miracle in his life. Deliver him from that cancer that's in his lungs. I speak miracles to him. I speak healing to his body in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for my friend, Jay Dykes, who's worried about her job. Bring a miracle to her. Lord, I pray for my friend, Pamela, who was furloughed in Jesus' name. I bring a miracle to her. I speak it in the name of Jesus. He went to the cross to give her this miracle. Let it flow into her family, God, in Jesus' name. That miracle wants to flow right now. Miracles still flow. Do you believe in prayer tonight? Why don't you begin to talk to Jesus? Jesus, do the miracle. Jesus, God, come and heal my body. Jesus, I, I pray right now for whatever it is that you, that you need. Start to pray right now for the miracle to take place. In Jesus' name, let the healing happen. Lord, let the, let the demon be cast out. Lord, let, the, let, the, let what is dead be resurrected. In Jesus' name, Sarah's going to sing. I want you to sing. I want you to worship God. I want you to pray. I want you to believe. And I want us to see the same Jesus do a miracle right now in this place. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't, don't, don't tune out. Tune in with what God's doing right now in this moment. Come on. Talk to God right now. For more information about redemption, look us up online at redemption-church.com. We want to hear from you, so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or even our anonymous question text line at 214-856-0550. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.